Hello everybody, I am Just Lance and I would like to welcome all of you back for another video. Anyhow, um, don't have any uh, new subscribers to announce, um, but I do want to say one thing. Pardon me guys, had an itch. Anyways, there is one thing I do want to say. Um, if you are a victim of these recent fires, wildfires here in California that just devastated so much of the state, my thoughts and my heart goes out to you. Um, so many people lost so much. It's so sad and so heartbreaking of what's happened to so many people. And my thoughts and prayers are with all of you. Um, so, with that said, let's move on to um, a happier subject. Um, yeah, so you want to be a wet shaver. This one video is about razors and blades. This is the second time I'm doing this video because the first time it was just way too long. It had too much. And I covered double edge, single edge. And when I say single edge, I mean gem style, injectors, um, artist clubs, chevettes. Um, yeah, I just covered way too much because I got thinking... You know what? Most people that get into this hobby, when they start, they're not looking at the latest Artist Club Razor. They're not looking at vintage gems, vintage Ever Readies. They're not looking at, um, you know, injectors. They're more than likely looking at double edge razors. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at that. And most likely they're not looking at vintage. Now there are two vintage that I will show you. But they're ones that is a quick progression for many when it comes to double edge razors. And then we'll talk a little bit about blades. So anyways, the first razor I'm going to show you is um, one that was very popular back in 2014. When I first got into this hobby. And it is this. This is the Micro Touch One Twist to Open Butterfly Safety Razor. It is called Twist to Open because you got this little knob at the bottom. And you twist it, it opens, you twist it, it closes. Anyways, and then you open it up. These Twist to Open razors are kind of, a lot of people like them because you just twist it, the knob, the doors open. Some people call them butterflies. Some people call them barns. Some people call them silo doors. Um, so whether it's butterfly doors, barn doors, silo doors, it's all the same thing. But you drop your blade over this linear or T-bar. And you go ahead. And then you just boom, twist it. Closed. Snug it. Never torque these down. Just snug it. And one tip I have about these butterfly razors, no matter what one it is, unless it's one of the vintage that Gillette's that have the quarter turn twist to lock the door, just when you do it, just snug it. Don't torque it down. If you torque it down, you're going to damage your razor. And um, this went for 20 bucks, And it was the one that the big bald guy from Pawn Stars was plugging. And... Um, it's just a rebranded Wishy, from what I understand. And you can still pick, I mean, you can you can get now, um, one that's very similar to that, is the Vanderhagen. It's pretty much the same damn razor. Um, and that's like 20, 15, between 15 and 20 bucks at Target, Walmart, um, many places. And that's a good, decent razor to start with. Um, the problem I have with the Microtouch one, I did not like the blades that came with it. The Vanderhagen, the blades are a little bit better, but I'm not as big a fan of the Vanderhagen razor blades as I am other blades. And in my honest opinion, they just charge too much for the Vanderhagen blades. Some people might disagree with me, and you know that's why they say your mileage may vary. Second razor that some people might get into when they're when they're researching, you know, razors and all that. Um, Two razors that are strongly recommended are the Merker 34C HD, which stands for heavy duty, and the um, Edwin Jagger DE89. Um, the Edwin Jagger, pretty much no matter what Edwin Jagger you go for, it's pretty much the same head, uh, just different handle choices. 
and um, it's a three-piece razor and we'll cover three piece a little bit now the Merker 34C you can't pick different handles because it is just a two-piece razor and it's this one right here and this was my second razor. As you can see, there's no lines in the top cap here. Um, and you have a little knob here, and you just spin it clockwise. And then the cap comes off, and you drop the blade over the stabilizer pin. I mean, over the threaded post onto the blade pins. And then you just go ahead, put your blade on, hold it. Drop it back in, spin the knob, and boom, you're ready to rock. I'm going to show you something about these razors. If you go ahead and get one of these razors, and people, they might freak out when it first happens. Or if you get it and it happens to you, you might freak out. You're cleaning your razor, and you're cleaning it up, wiping it down, and you... Uh-oh, it came apart. What do I do? Oh, no. And you try and it's like you can't get it back together. No matter how hard you push. Well, what it is, is inside the handle is this. This is the barrel that your threaded post goes in. And it just tightens down on that. And there is this little retainer ring. Okay, it's wide. And it's got a split in it. And what you do... Is you just take it, hold the retainer ring with the split up or down, whatever, put it on, and then just give it a squeeze, and it goes right back together. And then you're good. So if you get this razor, the 34C, and that happens, or any two piece out there, and that happens because two pieces, they're not made as much as the three piece and the twister opens. But if you have a two piece and that happens, then it's just twist the thing and put it back together. Um, the 34C, you can get them anywhere from 30 to 50 bucks, depending on where you go. I got mine on Amazon. You can find them real easy on Amazon. Just type in Mercur 34C HD or 34C HD and boom it'll take you to it the next razor that we're going to look at is a three piece meaning it comes apart in three pieces and it's a slant bar razor and you can pick it up at razor rock for under 20 bucks anywhere from 15 to 20 bucks depending on what version you get and this is the german 37 slant um torsion bar razor it's a slant bar because you may not be able to see it, but the base plate, you can see it there probably if you're looking at it, it slants. Basically, it's twisted. And what that does is when you put the blade on and you put the top, the base plate on and you put the handle on, it twists the blade. And it's a three piece, so you just unscrew the handle, and this has a 316. L stainless steel handle as you can see it's got that really neat bamboo shape and it's pretty smooth no knurling but with these ridges it's easy to hold and you just take it pull it apart like so drop your blade over the threaded post onto the blade pins hold it put it like that And then just twist it or put the handle on, screw it on, and you're ready to shave. Three piece, um, they're nice because you can buy additional handles and switch out your handles if you're into that. You can have different style handles. They got different style handles, they got wave handles, barber pole handles. Um, Bamboo style handles, bulldog style hand. They've got a lot of different handle choices out there. So the next one I'm going to show you, or the next ones I will show you, are all adjustable. One is made of stainless steel, and it is a modern adjustable, and it is this. This is the Rockwell 6S 
solid stainless steel. It's all 316L stainless steel. It's marine grade stainless steel. This razor goes for a hundred bucks. Uh, you can pick them up. Um, RazorEmporium.com, Maggards, uh, I believe West Coast Shave, Maggards.com, I believe West Coast Shaving.com, or Rockwell Razors.com. And it's adjustable because and it's three piece, so you unscrew the handle. And it's a heavy, and you know, it's a heavier razor, and it and it's a hundred bucks because the way it's made is basically these base plates are injected molding. In other words, they take the liquid metal, inject it into a mold. Once it hardens and cools, then they pop them out. Anyway, and go ahead and finish them. This is called a matte finish, but it's called, it's not polished. It's called, it's adjustable because you can't, it comes with three of these plates. As you can see, the plate's the same on either side. And if you're not willing to spend a hundred bucks, you can spend 50 bucks for the six C, which it's a cast, all cast metal. Um, it's not stainless steel, but you have these three plates. You come with three plates like this. The first one is settings one three, the second is two four, and the third is five six. And the way it works is, I don't know if you can see it, but it's got an R with a number on one side, on each side. And once you do, say you want to go ahead and you want to shave on setting 4. Well, you would put it together like so. Screw the handle on. Because it is a three-piece. And then you would look here at the bottom of the head. And whatever number you see, you'll see an R with a 1 through 6. So if, it's, if you see... R2, then all you have to do is take it apart, flip it over to where you see R4. And it's, quite frankly, one of my favorite razors. It is an absolute joy to shave with. Um, now, one thing that people quickly move into is they hear about these Gillette, vintage Gillette adjustables, and they got to have one. Well, I've got two here. One that is very popular as far as the Gillette adjustables go, is this one. This is the Gillette Slim Adjustable. This razor was made in 1964. These old Gillettes are all brass construction. The majority of them are all brass. You know, the whole thing is brass. And then they're plated in, in nickel, gold, rhodium, whatever. And you just turn it. It's a twist to open. Drop your thin blade in. Twist it. And it's got a little quarter turn lock. Not all of them have the core trim lock, but a lot of them. And just give it a little twist, and it locks those doors. Now, if you're shaving, just between pat, just between, you know, as you're doing, if it feels like the blade's starting to move, or you hear a little rattling, then your doors are coming open. And maybe between, you know, when you go to rinse after you rinse, just make sure your doors close. But it's adjustable because you have a collar here, one through nine, and it clicks. Counterclockwise goes up to nine. Clockwise goes down to one. And whenever you use one of these vintage Gillette adjustables, always pop the doors open part way when you adjust it. Because if you don't, it's going to bind up that mechanism and it could damage your razor. At the most, at the least, it's going to give you a crappy shave. Those are popular and you can find them on eBay. Really reasonable, 15 to 30 bucks. The other adjustable I'll show you is one that gets absolutely, in some cases, people pay crazy prices for. It's kind of one that when they hear about, everybody's like, I got to have one, I got to have one. And it's the Gillette 195 adjustable. That means that the razor cost $1.95 when it was new. And it's this one. People call them Fat Boys. The Gillette Fat Boy. I paid 40 bucks for this one, but the reason I paid that much for it is because the gentleman I got it from who sent me a bunch of razors, including that Slim Adjustable I just saw you, just like say, here you go, I hope this helps grow your channel, um, and you know who you are, and I thank you very much, but he sold it to me for 40 what he did was he sent it into Razor Emporium and had it tuned up, they made sure that the blade alignment and all that was, was good. 
and 40 bucks for Fat Boy. And I love this razor. It's one of my favorites. It gives great shaves and it's just nice to have in the den. Now, that's adjustables. Now, the last razor I'm going to show you is an example of what's called a premium razor. One moment, folks. Zero, 15, Colin, stop recording video. All right, gotcha. cool. That was, my, that was my voiceover on my phone. Cool, we're at less than 16 minutes. Cool, this is going to be a quicker video than some. The last razor I'm going to show you is a premium razor, and they go for 140 They're machine. It's machined here in America. Everything that you get through the company is made here in America. And that is this. This is the Timeless 0 0.78 bronze open comb safety razor that 7.0.78 is the blade gap in other words how much space is between the the blade and the safety bar and it's an open comb as you can see and it's a three piece incredibly smooth 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 threads As you can see, instead of blade pins, it's got these little bars, these tabs. And as you can see, that's really nicely machined right there. And drop your blade onto your scalloped cap, which it's called scalloped, because as you can see, it's got all these lines in it. Hold it. Put it together. Now you might say, does a $140 razor give you a better shave than this old vintage Gillette? That could probably or this 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 um micro touch one. Yeah, it does, it does. But this $20 razor. Does it give me a better shave than one of these vintage Gillettes? Uh, maybe not. Does it give me a better shave than this Rockwell 6S? Definitely not. And you think, why would you pay 140 bucks for a razor? Well, one, this is my hobby. Two, I plan on passing my stuff on to my son one day when I'm gone. And I don't know if the, the MicroTouch one won't last my lifetime. Maybe it will. Probably not. It definitely won't last my lifetime in my son's. I might be surprised, or he might, my son might be surprised, because I take pretty good care of my stuff. It might, you know, it'll probably, it could probably outlast the Gillette's, definitely outlast any of the razors I got, because it's solid bronze. This is stainless steel, so it'll be around for a while. This is plated nickel, solid brass body, nickel plated. I'll never have to worry about the plating wearing off of this because it's bronze, solid bronze. Anyways, that is the razors. So yeah, $140 is very worth it to me considering how long it's gonna last. Now let's take a look at blades. One moment, folks. <clears throat> Quick tip, if you're into multiple razors like I am, I got this little tin. I got a square of toilet paper folded up. In here, I got a Gillette Wilkinson Sword Saloon Blade. I've got either a Permasharp or, Dor or Dor Derby Extra Half Blade for Chevette's. And a Jim Single Edge Blue Star, Jim Blue Star razor blade for my Jim Style Single Edge. That way you ain't got to grab a pack of blades, go into your bathroom. You got this. Anyways, so let's take a look at double edge blades. Alright, shall we? <clears throat> double edge blades come in a tuck. This is a 10 pack of 
Wilkinson Sword Gillette Saloon Blades. And as you can see, it's been opened. But you pop this here open like so, where it's closed. Most of these cardboard tucks all have a little line here and a perforated edge, so you just pull it up. And then you can pull your blades out and then just tuck the end down. That way, blades don't slide out. This pack holds 10. They have some blades come in a pack where it's like a plastic thing, like you would see back in the old days where it had five blades or whatever, and you'd slide it out. Blade would come part way out, and you'd pull out a bare blade, put it in your razor. Some of them, the tucks are all plastic with a little thing slot in the back where you can slide your dead, your dead blade into it when you're done. And blades, if they come in a tuck, um, they come wrapped in paper. Okay, Some one layer of paper, some double wrap. Like that, you just pull it. And this, these gillettes are single wrapped. Hang on guys. And you unwrap it. And that's your blade. Double edge because you got a cutting edge here and a cutting edge here. As you can see, it's got this long slot with these little rounded holes to go over your blade tabs. Now, your twist to open, we'll use the Gillette Slim Adjustable. Open it up. Drop your blade like so. Boom, you're ready to shave. The three piece. Unscrew the handle. Take the base plate off. Drop it on your top cap. Hold it. If my hands are shaking a little bit, I apologize. Drop your base plate. your handle on, snug it, and you're ready to shave. And that's pretty much all. And the two-piece, same thing. Just unscrew it. No, we'll do it real quick just for the hell of it. There it is. And screw it. Pull your plate off. Take your blade. Me, I pretty much got to hold it like so. Oops. Okay. Too far. Put it on. Hold it like so. Put it on. Turn it up like so. And you're ready to shave. Anyways, so that's razors and blades. Um Real quick, when it comes to razors and blades. First, blades. 
The best thing to do if you're getting into this is don't just buy one blade, one type of blade. Don't buy a hunter pack. And a hunter pack, you can get them really cheap. Um, six, seven bucks and up. Um, get a sample pack. Most places that sell wet shaving gear, they sell sample packs. eBay, you could probably find sample packs. eBay is a great place to get razor blades, by the way. But you get a sample pack, and a sample pack is multiple pack or packs of multiple types of blades. Okay, you might get some Astros, Feathers, Darbies, whatever. And then go ahead and try that because you don't want to spend 30 bucks or whatever it cost for a hundred pack of feathers thinking yeah it's sharp blade it's going to go right through my beard and go ahead and get absolutely mangled by the blade and if you are new at this don't start out with feathers sharpest blade they make or sharpest blade you can buy i guarantee you if you're new at this and your technique ain't good and you take a feather blade to your face, it's liable to kick your butt. But anyways, um, but if you want to give it a try, I can't stop you. Um, but yeah, get a sample pack. That way you can try a blade. And if you try one blade and you think, oh God, this blade is so dull. It could be a dud. Um, that happens sometimes. It's happened to me. I've went ahead and used blades where they always give me a great shave. Try it and, oh, it's a dud. Pull it out of my razor, grab a fresh blade out of that pack. Yep, that's good. And it works great. Um, so if you get a blade that ain't cutting or anything, swap it out for a second blade um, of the same blade and give it a try. That way, so, you know, you find out whether you like the blade or not. You might like it, you might not, because everybody's face is different. What I like, you may not. What you like, I may not. And so get sample packs. And if somebody says, oh, you know what, you want a great razor, go ahead and get a $200 icon or a $200 um, timeless or get yourself a $180 above the tie or get a hundred and whatever icon. You don't need a hundred plus dollar razor to get a great shave. Um, just get what you can afford. And if they say, no, you got to get the, you know what? Don't listen to them. Make your up your own mind. Um, it's your face. It's your hobby. And most importantly, it's your wallet. Anyhow, so that's all I got. I hope you all enjoyed this video. Um, if I'm unable to get back here before Thursday, all I can say, because we're going out of town, is all I can say is everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. Once again, my heart goes out to all of those who lost so much in these wildfires. Um, if you have a donation center in your, in your area and if you got stuff laying around the house that you don't need anymore, go ahead and take it down. We're going to do the same. Um, but take it down, donate, you know, uh, just, you know, I mean, so many people lost so much and whenever you can do anything to help those who lost so much, it's a good thing. It makes you feel good. Anyhow, um, I'm done. I'm out of here. I'll see all of you on the flip side of the blade. Bye-bye now. Hey, everybody. Real quick, there's two things I wanted to touch on, which I forgot. Um, well, one is just kind of a little goody for y'all. Anyways, the one thing I wanted to touch on was disposing of your used razor blades. Um, you don't want to throw a used razor blade in the garbage. Even though it's not sharp enough to cut your whiskers anymore, it's still sharp enough to hurt somebody. The last thing you want is if you have children or a pet, like a dog that likes to get into garbage, you don't want a child or, or your dog to get hold of a used razor blade. That could be absolutely disastrous. Um, so you want what people call a blade bank. Um, some people make their own like I do, but many people just buy them off of their websites. You go to a website that sells wet shave gear. They usually sell blade banks, and they're usually a couple of bucks. 
Uh, me, my first way bank was just an empty salsa container uh, where I taped the lid on and then I went ahead and I sliced the, put a slot in the top and just put my blades in that way. Um, I've heard of people using empty pill bottles with the child safe lids. Once that's full, they just throw it into the, the trash. I've heard of people using small peanut butter jars. My geese stuff. My son's in here with me. Um, but me, this is my latest blade bank. I want something I could reuse. It's this big old pill bottle for a certain type of medication I take. I just sliced it, put a slot up here, and it's got a child safe lid. So I'm not really worried about, about it. And I keep it up out of reach of my son. And, uh, you know, when it's full, I'll just go ahead and dump, dump it into a, a Ziploc bag and throw the bag in the dumpster. Some place, some towns and cities, pharmacists will recycle your blades. But, anyways, um, from what I understand. And the other one is this. Come here, Bubba. Okay. Come on. My son, Michael, who wanted to say on a count of three, say happy Thanksgiving, okay. everybody. One, two, can you see yourself? Yeah. One, two, three, now. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Ouch! <laughs> and, sorry, Bubba. Anyways, that's my boy Mikey. He wants to say Happy Thanksgiving. Anyhow, y'all have a good one, and I'll see you later. Bye-bye now.